Hi everyone, this is Rob, VK3BVW in Melbourne, Australia. Today we're going to have a look at an antenna which is called the Double Bazooka. It's been around for some time but it's actually a new antenna for me. It was first designed in the 1940s at uh, MIT in the US for government uh, uh, radar installations at that time. And then it became adopted and adapted by amateur radio operators from about the 1950s onwards. It's an interesting antenna, it's an interesting design, and I already have one up in the air, an 80 meter version, and we're going to have a closer look at the 40 meter version as well. This particular antenna comes from the IAC Antenna Corporation in America. So, let's go and have a look at it. Here's a diagram of the double bazooka, and it comes from N4UJW. You can see that it sort of looks like a dipole but with some significant differences. So the antenna is made of coax cable RG58 and on each end, on each leg, it also has 300 ohm twin lead. So in the antenna itself, in the coax part of the antenna, the sender conductor is not broken that runs all the way through the uh, coax cable but the uh, shield is split so that you have shield on two legs. You can also see that the centre conductor and the shield at the end of the coax is attached together before being attached to the twin lead. Now the feed line is also coax the centre conductor of the feed line goes to one leg of the antenna attaching to the shield and the shield of the feed line goes to the shield of the other leg of the antenna. So let's have a look at it and uh, see what it looks like in its physical form. So here is the antenna as it comes straight out of its packaging. It also comes with printed instructions and you can also download the printed instructions from the IAC website if you're looking for more information on the antenna itself. The cable is Belden and it's RG58 cable. It looks to be a very good quality as does the 300 ohm twin lead. The antenna is recommended that you set it up as an inverted V and so it has an eyelet at the top in order to be able to, to do that. You can also set it as a horizontal dipole, uh, but with the 40 and 80 meter versions, it's recommended that you have a messenger line that will help uh, support the antenna in the air because of its weight. But we'll be setting this one up as an inverted V. Remembering that the antenna, the oil the coax part of the antenna, is really one piece of coax. The centre connector of the coax is not cut, so it's running straight through there. It's the shield that's cut on both sides, and the feed line is um, attached down here, where the centre point of the the centre connector of the feed line will go to the shield of one side, and the shield of the feed line will go to the shield on the other leg of the antenna. When you get to the point where the 300 ohm line is going to be connected, the centre connector and shield of the coax are joined together and then it's joined with the 300 ohm uh, uh, line after that. It's at this point here between the coax and the uh, twin lead that can sometimes be a problem for home constructors of the double bazooka or of some other commercially available antennas. It's at this point here which the antenna will often break away. I don't think this is going to be the case with this double bazooka. You can feel through the plastic here where the join is. The whole area here is covered with quite a thick um, plastic sheath and where the join is there and where the plastic sheath ends there is quite some distance on both sides which will allow 
for the support needed to make that connection last. There's also very good evidence of uh, sealant uh, so that the, we won't get moisture through here and there's also a moulded plastic uh, end on the twin lead as well which is also going to uh, make sure that the antenna is, uh, is nice and dry. So let's get back to the shack and we'll uh, see how the antenna works. So the 40 meter and 80 meter antennas are now up in the air and I've just put up a couple of quick, quick pictures here to, to show you what they look like. And you'll see that they're at the apex of the antennas, they're surrounded by trees. They're probably about nine or 10 meters up in the air. It's not very high at all. And uh, they're in the inverted V configuration. And one leg of the 40 meter and one leg of the 80 meter antenna are both uh, pass close to steel roofs. So they're certainly not ideal situations and I'm sure that others can probably get their antennas up higher and more in the clear than I've been able to do here in these limited circumstances. But at least we can see in these limited circumstances what the antennas are capable of doing. We have tested the 40 meter antenna and uh, from a transmitting point of view the SWR is, is uh, really low uh, from 7 megs right through to beyond 7.2 megs in the Australian amateur band so it works really really well from that point of view. You can just plug that antenna straight into the transceiver without any uh, antenna tuning unit or anything like that and uh, it'll work fine. There is no ballon on this antenna either. It doesn't seem to need it. And it's not called for in the instructions, so we haven't put one in. And things seem to be working quite fine. There's no stray RF running around the shack or anything like that. So we've had uh, some contacts on 40 meters and it's worked uh, really well. The reports have been um, very positive. Considering the height of the antenna, which is, as I said earlier, not very high at all, it's getting out extremely well. The antenna is also a very good listening antenna and I do quite a lot of shortwave broadcast band listening as well as my amateur radio transmitting activities. So the antenna has been very useful from that point of view. In the example that we're going to show here of uh, on second for seven megahertz uh, you'll find that uh, we switch between a reference antenna and the double bazooka to make a, uh, a comparison between the two. The reference antenna is a PAR end fed SWL antenna. It's quite a common antenna. It's been around for quite some time. And you'll see that on some of the stronger signals that there's probably only about a 1 or 2 S point difference between the two antennas. However, on weaker signals, the uh, uh, double bazooka can make the difference between uh, having the station audible or virtually being uh, bogged down in the noise. And while we're talking about noise, there will be a couple of clips that you'll see where the uh, double bazooka is effective in actually quelling some of the noise that we, that we hear uh, on the band. So um, let's have a look at uh, some of these clips, see what you think.
تحلیلات النرد بالنرد So, there you have it. You can get more information on the double bazooka and other antennas by simply going to the IAC website, which is iacantennas.com. They're based in Pennsylvania, and uh, they also have a very good shipping department. They had both antennas out to me here in Australia in double quick time, which was very much appreciated. Best of luck with your radio activities, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. This is Rob, VK3BVW, 73, best wishes.